Okay, magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. On the part of the Senate, this meeting of the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee or National Health Insurance Program created under Republic Act No. 7875 as amended by Republic Act No. 9241 and 10606 is hereby called to order. On the part of the House of Representatives, this meeting is now called to order. With the permission of my counterpart, Congresswoman Helen Tan, may I request the Senate, uh, the, the House Committee Secretary, Sir Hill Estella, to acknowledge the resource persons present for today. With the indulgence of the Joint Congressional Oversight Committee, the, the participants for this uh, meeting are from the PhilHealth, Dr. Celestina Maria Jude B. De La Serna, ASEC Federico V. Buon Jr., Ruben John A. Basa, Dr. Israel Francis Pargas, Engineer Rupita Aragona, Attorney Jermaine Lim, Dr. Dennis Mas, Gregorio C. Rulioda, Ms. Nerisa R. Santiago, Dr. Clementine A. Bautista, Attorney J. Villegas, Dr. Narcisa Portia J. Sugay, Leila Tuazon, Dr. Melanie C. Santillan, Dr. Riza Mahela L. Herrera, Rebecca Y. Ragsag, Yusek Mario C. Velarde of the DOH, Dr. Jesus M. Hardin, and for the Peel Health Board, uh, we have Dr. Roberto Salvador and Dr. Ray Roy Ferrer. Ah, thank you, sirs. Thank you. Again, um, with the permission of my co-chair, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Nancy Binay on the part of the Senate. I'd like to recognize the presence of the members from the House of Representatives, Honorable Cheryl Delioso Montalia and Honorable uh, Katrina Enverga. Thank you, Madam. Again, with the permission of my co-chair and all the members here in present, please allow me to give my brief opening remarks. Good afternoon. This Joint Oversight Committee on the National Health Insurance convenes today in the exercise of its oversight function under Republic Act No. 7875, as amended by RA 9241 and RA 10606. The need for this joint congressional meeting is imperative with the Congress move to pass the Universal Health Care Bill. Indeed, the role of the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation cannot be overemphasized. The need for this Sa ating pong layunin na makapagbalangkas ng isang batas na tutugon sa karapatang pangkalusugan ng ating mga kababayan, kailangan natin matiyak ang kahandaan ng bawat ahensya ng gobyerno. Handa ba tayo sa malaking trabaho at responsibilidad na ipagkakatiwala sa atin? Isa lang po ito sa mga tanong na nais nating mabigyan linaw ngayong araw. It was reported by PhilHealth during our regional consultation for the UHC that currently 93 million Filipinos or 91% of the total population now have the opportunity to avail of field health benefits. We acknowledge this accomplishment as well as the expansion of coverage and membership. However, with this wide coverage, how does the agency handle its financial statement to ensure its sustainability and prevent collapse while at the same time efficiently covering the health needs of every Filipino? Nakakabahala po ang mga tatanggap nating report nitong nakarang araw na nakapagtala daw ang PhilHealth ng 8.9 bilyon na pagkalugi. Ito po ay taliwa sa direksyon na gusto nating tunguhin ng PhilHealth sa responsibilidad nitong makapagbigay ng abot kayang health services and goods sa bawat Pilipino at libre serbisyo sa mga kababayan nating may hirap. Ilang kaso ng dialysis at cancer patients ang sanay nakikinabang sa halagang ito. In ang mga e-digents, barangay health workers, PWDs, at senior citizens sana ang nabagbibenepisyo sa bilyong halaga kung map mapangasawaan ng sana ng maayos. Kapag po sa Committee on Urban Planning, Housing, and Resettlement na aking pong pinamumunuan din, nagkaroon po ako ng konklusyon na may mafia sa housing sector 
kung kaya gano'n na lamang ang lugi ng gobyerno dahil nga pa, sa hindi mapakinabangan ng mga babahay na nagkakalaga ng bilyong piso. The situation in PhilHealth is a key to the housing sector fiasco. Was there a mafia in PhilHealth? I hope not, but the multi-billion peso loss is more than a mismanagement issue and lack of leadership. The Chair does not want to give conclusions how PhilHealth arrived at this situation. It is precisely for this purpose of this oversight meeting to find out, to assess, and to review the performance of PhilHealth through its current management and leadership. This multi-billion peso loss could have gone a long way to benefit our constituents. Kung ako po yung nakapagsita last week dahil doon sa report, doon ko sa ating OIC, pasensya na po. Kaya nga po nagpatawag ako ng hearing to hear your side also on the matter of the travel expenses. But more than the travel expenses, I am very much concerned about the losses of field health as we are now about to pass the Universal Health Care Bill. Mandato at pananagutan, ito po ang dalawang bagay na nais natin bigyang diin. Simula pa lamang ay nagbigay na tayo ng babala na dahil sa napakahalagang papel ng PhilHealth, kailangan nito ng permanenting leader na may mandato at pananagutan at gagabay upang mas mapaunlad ang operasyon ng ahensya. At the end of the day, the poor Filipinos will depend on the health and other social services of the government. By the time that we pass the universal health care law, all Filipinos will look forward towards the government's direction in providing these services efficiently. We in government have a mandate to make all of this work for the people. You in Philhealth have no choice but to step up and do your job better. The committee invited everyone who could shed light to Philhealth's operation and performance for the past years. I hope we invited the right people and we look forward to a productive discussion this afternoon. Thank you. I believe my co-chair also would like to give her opening statement and after which um, Senator Nancy Binay would also like to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In the interest of time, I'll make my opening remarks short. No? Nasabi na po ng ating minamahal na co-chair ang lahat ng dahilan kung bakit po tayo ay nagtitipon ngayong hapong ito. At naniniwala po ako na ito pong uh, uh, oversight committee on uh, Field health ay uh, tamang venue no para itrash out all the issues for the information of everyone hindi po tayo reactionary on one issue that came out of media but uh, there has been so many issues uh, in the field health in the past no like dekada na pong pinag-uusapan at uh, nagkakaroon ng investigasyon pero uh, siguro po ako as a doctor also ay interesado malaman ano na ba ang nangyari doon sa mga issues na paulit-ulit na lumalabas at iniimbestigahan kung ito po ba ay na-address, nabigyan ng solusyon at nakasuhan yung mga tao na dapat kasuhan. So, uh, just what our co-chair mentioned earlier, um, flagship program po ng ating presidente ang uh, uh, universal health care. Ibig sabihin po, ang bawat Pilipino ay magkaroon ng akses sa serbisyong pangkalusugan at ang PhilHealth ang napakahalaga na katuwang no, ng uh, Department of Health at sinasandalan ng lahat ng Pilipino para po tayo ay uh, mabigyan ng serbisyo. So we can't afford to lose PhilHealth. So eto na po ang venue. Ang hiling ko lang po sa ating mga guests uh, today, especially people from PhilHealth, to be transparent, uh, ipakita po ninyo sa amin ang totoong problema ng korporasyon nang sa ganun po, kami mismo na legislators, both from Congress and Senate, will be able to help you through legislations and set uh, policies, mechanisms, strategies, or find out if the actors are uh, working efficiently and effectively. So, this is the proper venue po. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Congressman Heredan. Senator Nancy Bino. Before we proceed, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of my colleagues from the House, Honorable Eileen Arcelias and Honorable Anna Suarez. Thank you for uh, being, 
for your presence, uh, madams. I'm really the only rose among the thorns. <laughs> I, I, I'm the only thorn among the roses. Beautiful roses at that. Anyway, another beautiful rose is coming. A former colleague and uh, now Congresswoman, uh, uh, former Senator Pia Cayetano. Thank you very much, ma'am, for joining us this afternoon as well. Senator Nancy Binay, you are now recognized. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Simula nang itatag ang PhilHealth o ang National Health Insurance Program sa pamamagitan ng Republic Act No. 7875 o ang National Health Insurance Act of 1995, milyong-milyong mga kababayan natin ang umaasa sa health insurance fund na ito. Sa hearing ngayong hapon, sana ay mabigyang linaw ang mga, ng mga opisyal ng PhilHealth ang ilang katunungan tungkol sa paggasta ng mahigit 60 billion na budget nito ngayong taon. Ilan na ba sa ating mga kababayan ang napagsilbihan na at anong kalidad ng serbisyo ang nakuha nila? Ilan na bang mga senior citizen, mga ulila, inabandonang mga bata, PWDs, mga buntis, at mga kababayang drug dependents na kailangan ng medical detoxification ang napagsilbihan na ng PhilHealth? I am also concerned about the PhilHealth's no balance billing policy and the seemingly lack of awareness and education campaign about the program. Alam ba ng ating mga kababayan ang programang ito at pati na rin ang pag-shift mula sa point of care papuntang point of service. For the past weeks, nagkaroon din ng issue pa patungkol sa di umanoy utang ng PhilHealth sa mga private hospitals. May katotohanan ba ito o wala? Inaasahan ko po na pagkatapos ng hearing na ito, ang mga impormasyon na makukuha ngayong hapon ay makakatulong sa aming mga mambabatas ngayong lalo na pagdating sa deliberasyon ng 2019 budget ng ahensya at sa pagpapatibay ng Universal Health Care Bill. In times of sickness, it is my hope and prayer that all patients can be assured that any incremental cost would be sufficiently and adequately covered by PhilHealth. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Senator Binay. From the House, anybody would like to, ano, or, anybody would like to give remarks? Or just after the presentation? Okay, so now to start the ball rolling, I'd like to ask um, PhilHealth, anybody we can uh, make a presentation so that uh, we may react thereafter. Um, our OIC and uh, President, Dr. Celestina G. De La Serna, you have the floor, ma'am. Magandang hapon po. Uh, to the honorable members of the Joint Oversight, uh, Joint Congressional Oversight Committee on the National Health Insurance Program, a pleasant good afternoon to all of you. The PhilHealth Charter mandates that all Filipinos shall be provided adequate access to quality health care services through social health insurance. We are pleased to report to you that under the leadership of our President Rodrigo Roa Duterte and with the in invaluable support of, the, of both Houses of Congress, PhilHealth has already reached its mandated target of providing universal membership, membership coverage for the Filipino nation. Naabot na po natin ang pangarap natin na mabigyan ng health insurance ang, bawat, ang lahat ng Pilipino, mayaman man o mahirap, matanda man o bata, at hindi po namin magagawa ito kung hindi dahil sa suporta ng ating mga mambabatas na naririto ngayon. Maraming salamat po sa inyong tulong. Enlistment numbers in PhilHealth no longer matters here, Your Honors. Nakarehistro ka man o hindi sa PhilHealth, may PhilHealth number ka man o wala, sagot pa rin ng PhilHealth ang pagpapagamot sa iyo. This is made possible by the national government infusion of additional 3 billion for the point of service program in 2017, which guarantees that every poor non-member entering a hospital is enlisted and provided with health insurance. Your Honors, PhilHealth membership does not recognize physical, social, or economic boundaries. The current makeup of our membership shows that programs bias for the poor, which now comprises a close to a third or 33% of the membership pie. A close second are members from the formal economy, from the public, and 30% uh, from the private sectors. Informal sector members follow at 22%. And 
and our senior citizens and lifetime members at 11%. The pieces of legislation that you passed, dear members of Congress, made possible our vi vision Bawat Filipino membro. This include the Syntax Law, the Kasambahay Law, the Amended Senior Citizen Law, uh, and budget laws that specify the inclusion of marginalized, marginalized sectors such as abandoned and abused children and those that are impoverished but not yet included in the DSWD list of poor beneficiaries. <coughs> On our financial status, Overall premium income of PhilHealth is steadily increasing at an average of 19% since year 2012. Premium income, income includes actual collection and our receivables mainly from government. In 2017, we have introduced a medical detoxi det detoxification package in support of those getting rid of addiction to illegal substance in response to the call of, the presi of President Duterte's war on drugs. Benefit packages for children with developmental disabilities, including those with hearing, seeing, and mobility impairment, benefits for premature and small newborns, and the enhanced benefit for standard risk lymphocytic leukemia to properly compensate the required level of management and service at par with our Western counterparts. Worthy to mention, of mention is the continuous rollout and deployment of our PCARE staff to major facilities. Sila po ang aming mga representative na nakadeploy sa mga ospital para tulungan at alalayan ang ating mga miyembro na nag, na sa pagpaproproseso ng kanilang mga beneficyo. In closing, let me allow me, please allow me to say a word or two of the pressing issues being hurled against PhilHealth in the news and in the public opinion arena. Your honors, a lot has been said about my person, my leadership, and the institution that I lead. Let me assure you that I am here in PhilHealth to protect the people's money, to ensure that every peso translates to better health care of our people. It is my mission in life as a government doctor for many years and now as a public servant in PhilHealth. I did not violate any law. I follow rules and regulations and procedures in government. I do not allow TV in public service. This is my commitment to the, pre to the president and to the Filipino people. With this mission, I have made representation with the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission and law enforcement agencies to help us investigate any whiff of corruption, sabi nga na Presidente, in our institution. We are ready to let go and even to file charges against erring officials or employees of PhilHealth. No one is indispensable in government service. There will be no sacred cows. Upon instruction from the board, I ordered a reshuffle of key officials in the region, most of whom have been in their post for two decades. With a heavy heart, I allowed the contracts of casuals to be shortened to three months for the purpose of performance review. The casual employees, are, however, are now back to a six-month contract. Acting on uh, findings from COA, I also ordered the withdrawal of employee benefits that are found not in accordance with law. Mabigat po sa dibdib ang lahat ng desisyon na ginagawa ko. Pero alam ko po na maaring maraming magalit na opisyal o empleyado sa mga desisyong ito. But I appeal to their sense of duty. Ang pondo ng PhilHealth ay galing sa kontribisyon ng mga tao, galing sa buwis ng mamamayan. Tungkulin nating lahat na tumbasan ng bawat sentimong nanggagaling sa bulsa ng ating mga kababayan. I would also like to take this opportunity to correct whatever misimpression was created by several news reports about the 8 billion gap in PhilHealth's financial report of 2017. We wish to clarify this from, from unaudited financial statements, which is currently being reviewed in the light of a recent COA recommendation to correct an observed double accounting entry of 4.1 billion in one of our regional offices. In the light of these developments, we are also double-checking the reports submitted by other offices for possible or similar occurrences. 
if we are to use our dashboard figures, which says that our payouts of 2017 is only more or less 101 billion, we may even post a net income or even a positive financial statement. Again, we await the final audit report from COA for the final verdict on this issue. This matter will be further discussed in detail by our finance sector. Pero kung may nagdududa man sa kakayanan ng filat na magbayad ng claims, hayaan ninyong garantihan ko kayo na sa ang kasalukuyang kalagayan ng inyong pondo ay umaabot ng 151.8 billion in total assets at may investment portfolio na umaabot ng 123.7 billion as of December 31, 2017. Ang inyong pondo ay na mamalaging matatag, protektado at may kakayahang sustenahan ang lahat ng obligasyon ng ahensya. Hayaan ninyo po na muling tiyakin sa inyo na ang filial ay kaisa ng ating pamalaan sa pagnanais na mabigyan ng sapat na proteksyon pinansyal ang bawat Pilipino laban sa magastos na pagpapagamot. Ito ang aming taus-pusong pangako sa inyo sa Kongreso at kabuuan ng pamahalaan at ang bawat Pilipino naghahangan ng mabuting, mabuting buhay. Maraming salamat po. Thank you for uh, uh, YC President Dr. Celestina C. De La Serna. Yes, po. Yes. Um, Mr. Senator, if you would like to hear from our uh, finance officer. Yes, uh, we will. Uh, we would like we would appreciate the financial statements probably so that all the legislators present will have a better um, understanding of the, the present situation. Uh, before we, uh, before I uh, acknowledge the Gregorio, Mr. Gregorio Rigoda, the SVP for Finance of Finland, uh, the chair would like to acknowledge also another another rose. In red, among uh, I'm, I'm the only turn. Uh, Senator Lisa Tiberos is also here, so it's a, a very lucky this afternoon to be surrounded by beautiful women, both in the House and the Senate. Um, Mr. Lada, please um, go ahead with your um, presentation of the financial statements because that is our concern, uh, I believe, this afternoon. Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat at uh, kami po ay uh, magbibigay ng uh, sitwasyon tungkol dito sa financial statement ng ating National Health Insurance Program. The order of my presentation is first to clarify the issue on the alleged loss of the 8.9 billion pesos as circulated in the different platform of media to be followed by the five-year comparative financial statements, both income statement and the financial position or the balance sheet. Unang-una po, ang PhilHealth po ay uh, isang uh, government business entity. Ito po ay iginawad ng Commission on Audit based on a COA resolution. So dito po sa uh, paggagawa ng financial statements, kami po ay uh, dapat gumamit ng Philippine Financial Reporting Standards at ito ang magiging basihan para lahat ng accounting standards and other pertinent rules and regulations will be followed. Next slide. The initial unaudited income loss statement of PhilHealth for CY 2017 posted a net loss of around 8.921 billion pesos. However, just recently, the resident auditor of the PhilHealth NCR an audit observation memorandum was issued on April 27, 2018 regarding the double entry recording of the benefit expense account by one of our regional office, that is the National Capital Region, amounting to more or less 4.17 billion pesos. And with the recommendation that PhilHealth NCR takes the necessary adjusting entries to reflect the correct accounts in the books for fair presentation in the financial statements. Complying with the said AOM and using the same accounting method in recognizing expenses after the adjustment net loss, the net loss is now reduced to 4.7.1 billion pesos or 47% lower from the original 8.921 billion. This is now the final financial statement being finally audited by our resident auditor. By, next slide, please. By year-end 2017, 
the result of FILAC's operations after reflecting such adjustment, the audited net loss is now 4.75 billion. The results of such net loss validate the actuarial valuation report for CY 2016 of the Office of the Actuary, including the assumptions and scenarios considered. As predicted by the actuary, benefit payment will exceed collections because the premium adjustment did not materialize in 2017, rather it was moved to 2018, and that PhilHealth should have to improve its collection efficiency. It is noteworthy to mention that PhilHealth seems to have been realizing a loss in 2012 and 2013 based on a World Bank unpublished policy note on the assessment of the actuarial and financial management capacities of PhilHealth covering 2012 and 2013. In the said study, it was disclosed that if PhilHealth had followed the Philippine accounting standards on those years, it would have made significant losses both in 2013 and 2012, which is not reflected in its balance sheet. PhilHealth outstanding claims provision at December 31, 2013, based on the study, was deficient by almost 12.75 billion. Further, it was revealed that from the lenses of the international financial reporting standards, PhilHealth then was likely to be losing money currently on an underwriting basis. Thus, on the basis of IFRS, PhilHealth may not be nearly as financially secure as its 20, December 2013 balance sheet suggests. All the audit reports after CY 2007 have been qualified and indicated that PhilHealth systems and procedures do not seem to, really, to fully adequate for its business and they were required for a significant overhaul. For your information, Your Honors, it was on, there were only five years that uh, PhilHealth got an unqualified opinion that was in 2007, 2014, 15, and 16. So those were the years that uh, the audit opinion had been rendered to PhilHealth on its financial statements. All others, these are a qualified opinion. Effective CY 2014, because of that, uh, because of that uh, work report, PhilHealth have now is now using the provision of an accrual of incurred but not yet paid. This was the observation of the uh, World Bank before that PhilHealth was not booking before the claims that are still in the possession of the hospitals that will be received by PhilHealth as well as those already in the receipt of PhilHealth. This was not booked up before. So it was in 2014 that we started to provide the accrual basis for claims that were not yet paid. So these are claims that are in process. These are already in our possession, but not yet uh, paid to the hospitals, as well as those claims that are in the possession of hospitals, which will be received by PhilHealth within 60 days upon discharge. So that was a major change as far as the accounting system is concerned, because that is the industry practice of insurance accounting setting up of accrued benefit expense for incurred but not yet paid. Slide number four. Next. This slide, this slide will show the results of operations from 2013 to 2017. It shows that PhilHealth's expense is more than the income it has received. The sudden leap in the premium income happened in 2014 due to the subsidy from the national government for the indigent and HTS program, which almost tripled the amount of subsidy from 12.5 billion pesos to 35.2 billion pesos coming from the share of the proceeds from sin taxes, covering more indigent families under the NHTS program from 5.2 million to families to 14.7 families. With the implementation of RA number 10645 as amended, otherwise known as the Expanded Senior Citizens Act of 2010, providing for the mandatory filler coverage of all senior citizens that started in 2014, PhilHealth has recorded an accounts receivable due from the national government based on the billing statements to more or less 
20 billion pesos, 2.12 billion pesos for 2014, 13.045 billion pesos for CY 2015. Same amount was also recognized as income in 2016. However, only 7.58 billion pesos or 58% of the amount billed was released by DBM. For the former economy, as far as income is concerned, private sector has posted an average of 9% growth rate while the government sector revealed a 5% growth rate over the last five years. For year 2017, the efficiency for government is almost 97% and for the private sector, we have uh, accounted more or less a 70%. On the part of benefit expense, which is uh, the most large part of the corporate operating budget of PhilHealth, while the corporation strives to improve its collection, as evidenced by the upward trend in the premium income previously presented by our president and CEO, reimbursement of claims also continue to grow each year. The benefit increase was also a result of increase in membership and accordingly increase in the volume of availment of benefits under PhilHealth. On the benefit availment side, the biggest leap was made in 2014. This is the year when PhilHealth has shifted its payment mechanism from fee-for-service to all case rates. Case rates payment was initially implemented in September 1, 2011 for 11 medical cases and 12 surgical cases. For CY 2014, benefit expenses started to rise substantially. There was a 14.5% increase in the number of claims, resulting to a 39.4% increase equivalent to an amount of 21.8 billion pesos. Furthermore, it has introduced and enhanced its benefit packages over the years, like the Z benefits, primary care benefits, medical detoxification package, new field health dialysis package, among others. Likewise, it expanded beneficiaries to the program, which contributed to the increase in utilization, such as but not limited to the coverage of foster child as qualified dependents, women about to give birth, parents below 60 years old with permanent disability, and the mandatory coverage of senior citizens, as well as the implementation of the point of service. The implementation of the point of care program, which is anchored to universal coverage, also contributed to the rise in the benefit payments, which started in 2013 and have been carried forward thereafter. For CY 2015, it is glaring that the total benefit expense has increased by 21.92 billion pesos. This is caused by the 26.6% increase in the number of claims, mostly coming from the senior citizens, who were automatically covered beginning the last quarter of 2014. The benefit expense for senior citizens is now rising in addition to the expenses provided to the lifetime members. The point of service with appropriation of 3 billion for CY 2017 accounted for an expenditure of 494.72 million pesos or 16% only from the amount appropriated. So hindi pa po natin naubos yung nakapropriate na 3 billion pesos. Another component of benefits expense is the primary care benefit package which was initially implemented in 2012 to cover members and qualified dependents of sponsored programs, organized, organized groups, overseas workers, as well as the indigents. And this was expanded in 2013 to include employed sector, especially personnel of the Department of Education and Education. In 2014, the total benefit, the primary care benefit Package recorded was at 7.03 billion, which is around 81% or 5.68 billion were claims from the indigent. The continuous adoption and implementation of new packages as well as enhancement of existing ones were reflected in the benefit ex expense increasing tremendously over the last five years and even surpassing premium income in 2017. 
on our operating expense, the reduction of administrative expenses from CY 2016 to 2017 was brought about by the discontinuation of payment on the disallowed allowances and benefits of employees resulted to a 1.06 billion decline. Ito po yung sinabi ng ating Presidente kanina na in 2017 po ay nag-implement po kami ng uh, uh, hindi na namin ipinagpapatuloy yung mga disallowed benefits for employees. On the other hand, our PS account in the 2017 was more than two times the amount in 2016 due to the retirement gratuity as well as terminal pay of some employees. PhilHealth even equalized the monetary benefits for casuals with our regular employees. Now let's talk about the net loss. The net loss for the period ended 20, December 31, 2017 was greatly contributed by the provision of higher benefits compared to the income recognized from the following membership. Benefits for the senior citizens category has gone over its premium collections, paying 1.63 centavos for every peso of premium subsidy. Our benefit expense for the senior citizens for year 2017 accounts 21.32 billion pesos with an appropriation of 13.045 billion pesos. The sponsored category membership, which, is, which includes the point of care program, has a payout of 4.09 pesos for every 4.09 centavos for every peso we receive. The benefit expense that we provide for sponsored category is 12.29 billion pesos over a 3 billion collection. For the informal sector or the self-employed category, the corporation expended 3.56 for every 1 peso premium collection. This has been the trend for the past 10 years where the benefit expense exceeds the premium income. This evidently show that premium collections can no longer sustain their claims counterpart. The reinstated amount for net loss for CY 2016 accounts for the prior year expenses of primary care benefits, which were paid in 2017 as the supporting documents were not available during the 2016 closing of the books. There is a need to address the narrowing gap between collections and benefit payments as stated in its actuarial studies recommending the following strategies. It is imperative, it is imper imperative that the collection efficiency rate should be improved, the former, as this is one of the critical issues of attaining sustainability. Inclusion of the adjusted premium contribution of the government employees and employers in the General Appropriations Act and implementation to other membership category. Rationalization of benefit payouts to ensure that members receive benefits most responsive to their medical needs and which are cost effective and the proper costing of case rates. Next slide. As far as the syntax shares is concerned, the premium subsidy for 5.2 2 million indigents for 2013 represents a 12.55 billion. In 2014, the amount appropriated in the GAA has almost tripled and the full amount was received by DBM. Likewise, in 2015, the full subsidy for GAA amounting to 37.06 billion covering the enrollment of 15.4 families was also released fully by the Department of Budget and Management. Same amount was appropriated in 2016 and 2017. However, both appropriations were not fully utilized by PhilHealth. Had this been utilized, built and released, it would have reduced the losses incurred by the corporation for both years. Next. As previously stated, senior citizens uh, and started providing mandatory coverage for PhilHealth senior citizens in the last quarter of 2014. PhilHealth has been continuously billing DBM for the following 2014, a 2.117 billion pesos. 2015, we are covering 5.4 million uh, senior citizens, which will have an appropriation of 13.045 billion. 2016, the same number with full subsidy of 
45 billion pesos, but with unapproved GAA of only 6.775 billion. The, if you can see there, the GAA is higher than the release because DBM had made an additional release of 802 million pesos. The uncollected amounts stated therein were all accounted as accounts receivable to match the incurred expenses provided to the automatic coverage of senior citizens. In CY 2017, same number of senior citizens was automatically enrolled to the program and was provided with an appropriation of 13.0. 45 billion pesos, which was fully released by the Department of Budget and Management. Next slide. For the total assets, the financial position of the corporation. Total assets has increased in 2014 due to the increase in our investment portfolio brought about by the increase in the premium subsidy for indigents. In 2015, the increase in assets was due to the receivable from the national government covering subsidy of the senior citizens from the implementation of the expanded Senior Citizens Act. However, it dropped in year 2016 brought about by the recording of an allowance for doubtful accounts for uncollectible receivables as recommended by the Commission on Audit. PhilHealth's investment earnings have an average of 6.5%. 275 billion and, and an average yield of 4.87% over the last five years. Total liabilities made a huge jump in 2016, almost doubling the obligations in 2015 due to the recording of insurance liability for lifetime members as required under Section 17 of the PhilHealth Act. This is being estimated by the corporate actuary. In 2017, our total liabilities has increased by 18% as benefit claims payable grew by 26% or equivalent to 9.93 billion pesos of which incurred but not yet received claims have increased by 40% from 8.21 billion last year to 11.47 billion in 2017. Corollary there too, the decline in 2016 from 2015 of the members' equity was due to the recording of the insurance liability for lifetime members. Reserve fund balance in 2017, including the 24.8 billion insurance liability for lifetime members, was at 110.78 billion, lower by 2% than last year. The ratio reserve over the last two years' requirement was also reduced by 3%, which is now equivalent to 8.67 months. We would like also to give an overview of our investment portfolio. <coughs> Next. The corporation's investment portfolio is composed of the following. Special savings deposit, government securities, as well as corporate bonds. So, we have earned an investment income of 5.642 billion pesos as of December 31, 2017, compared to the 5.723 billion earnings in 2016. Next. So, we would like to provide you the NHIP projections 2017 onwards, kasi pinakita ko po kanina, na ang uh, income statement namin for uh, 2017 is all already close to the actuarial uh, study. So, the more or less the last slide, next slide. Looking forward, this graph shows the projection for the National Health Insurance Program. FINAL is now conducting review of benefit payouts and intensified monitoring of fraudulent claims as well as improving its collection efficiency. In line with the Philippine Health Agenda, PhilHealth will be expanding the coverage of the enhanced primary care benefit to all sectors which initially covers before the indigents. In addition, PhilHealth would like to improve the support value for its members which will result to a lower out-of-pocket spending by imposing fixed co-payment or co-insurance and will eliminate balance billing even for non-indigents for the essential health benefit package. 
This will significantly increase the benefit payout. These initiatives will address the benefit coverage and out-of-pocket spending of the members. If everything will be status quo, the fund will begin to dip, as it is illustrated by the broken line. If every to achieve the ideals of UHC, the board approved the revised contribution scheme starting 2018. So if you try to see the line doon po sa pinakaitaas, this is to achieve the ideals of universal health care. The board approved the revised contribution scheme starting 2018, and with these approved measures implemented, the fund will be sustainable or the actuarial life will extend beyond 2026. I think we will be discussing that later during the open forum. And our actuary is here to uh, provide more inputs to that. My last slide. Uh, last slide. From CY 2007 to 2016, or for 10 years, it was only in calendar years 2007, 14, 15, and 16, that PhilHealth was able to have an unqualified, modified, unmodified opinion from the Commission on Audit on the presentation of its financial statements. It would mean that PhilHealth discloses all the financial statements present fairly in all material aspects, as well as the position of PhilHealth as it reporting period and its financial performance, cash flows for the years then ended in accordance with the Philippine financial reporting standards. Yan lang po at maraming salamat. Mr. Chair, just for confirmation lang, parang tama ko ba yung hiling ko, by 2018, you would ask for more payment dun sa mga members ng PhilHealth? Um, Yung pong board approved, right? Good afternoon, Your Honors. Yung pong board approved uh, rates, uh, po dun sa, um, in line with the, with the Philippine Development Plan for Health, uh, we, we will be expanding the primary care benefit to all sectors. Ma dati po kasi sa indigents lang. Sige, ma yes, para mabilis lang kasi marami mo magtatanong. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so, so maliliin ho kayo ng mas malaki. Actually, um, ang proposal po is 0.25% increase every year. So, how much, how much is that? How much is 0.25? Uh, bali, magiging 3% po. Bali, 2.75 na po siya, percent of the salary for the formal. Siguro para mas clear, mas maliwanan. Kunwari, mm -hmm. site ni an example, kunwari, uh, kumikita ka ng 15,000 okay. or 10,000 minimum. Sabi so, po, 10,000 ang um, kinikita po. Kung dati po, um, magiging, um, um, ano niya, is 250 per month, uh, magiging 275 na po. So plus 25 pesos. Yes, po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, the center on the barrels is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I know I should actually be the last to speak because I was late, but with the indulgence of the chair and my colleagues in the joint committee, because I have to leave early for uh, a meeting naman with our uh, labor committee chair, uh, Joel Villanueva about the security of tenure bill. So, with the indulgence of the chair, nais ko lang pong iput on record yung mga tanong na itatanong ko sana ngayong hapon, pero itatanong na lamang sa susunod na hearing na itatawag ni chair. Basically, Mr. Chairman, four questions. Uh, one on the budget for field health premiums of indigents and other beneficiaries in the GAA of 2018. Pangalawa po on mental health. Uh, pangatlo po on the universal health care bill na china champion po ni Chair JV uh, on the part of the Senate. And last but not the least, concerns regarding the relationship uh, between the current OIC and the career employees of PhilHealth. Na lastly, Mr. Chair, in connection with that fourth set of questions, yung ilang mga issues po na nais nice kong itanong sa susunod na hearing kay galang-galang na President CEO at yung mga uh, field health employees din, kaugnay sa nature ng uh, leadership ni President CEO at kaugnay ng mga issues involving officers and employees of the corporation. Specifically po, Mr. Chair, reduction of term of casual employment, uh, alleged illegal termination of casual employee services, uh, alleged illegal exaction of agency fees, and filing of allegedly baseless cases against um, PhilHealth officers. 
And finally, Mr. Chair, other matters on alleged illegal appointment of third-level officers, um, placement of officers with allegedly questionable ties to a former officer uh, accused of uh, extortion, allegedly. And lastly uh, of all, Mr. Chair, reassignment of performing officers in the guise of cleaning up the corporation. So, lahat po tayo, Mr. Chair, lalo, lalo na uh, kayo, yung joint chairs natin, and kasama na po ako bilang dating member ng board ng PhilHealth would really want to uh, get to the truth about these issues na, na ni-raise para tayo sa Senate po at yung ating mga counterparts house ay talagang ganap na masuportahan ang PhilHealth to remain the great GOCC that I remember from my two-year work with the board in 2014 and 2015. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair, at mga kasama. Thank you, Sam. Uh, those questions are uh, um, It's part of the chance. I hope that the OIP is keeping uh, in contact with Andrew Anna with the uh, type of those uh, concerns. Uh, I'm going to continue right now. I will ask that the financial statements of PhilHealth from 2006 up to the present. Um, we will explain, no? If you would uh, put up, um, if you look at the FS, it's only the past two years that it has been on the red. However, there's a benefit, habang lumalaki naman yung income from 2006 to 2017, lumalaki rin naman yung benefit payments. So, kaya lang, it took past two years. Papa two years and answer to IC or C, Mr. Villarreal, Bakit po nagkaroon pa, bakit tayo naging on the red? So, baga matakita natin, no, may mga halos 20 billion na uh, increase sa payments uh, from 2014 to 2015, for example. Um, dapat may first from, ano, 2013. Halos 22 billion na in increase to 2014, and then another 22 billion. So, hindi pa tayo nagkaroon ng projections on uh, na dapat pa pagkantaan po sa ng ahensya. Kung ganyan po pala kung ang lumalaki ang ating mga benefit payments, siguro uh, we are here to, to uh, get the answer kung baka may mga kailangan pagpagdaktan. So siguro po kung yung sagutin mo na, ano po ang nag-post ng itong law, ng red line, ng 2015, 2016, 251 million, na yun po 8.9 billion, no? But as you stated, meron po po ang entry na pero po po yung seven, ano po, billion pa rin million. So what we are worried about, my culture when I met earlier, that as we are about to pack the local healthcare program bill, which is, um, which was the priority item even mentioned by the president last year, how would we be able to realize this program if the agency that is con that concerned, that is uh, expected to, to undertake this, uh, this program, is not financially healthy. Kaya dapat ang healthy, pero yung finances natin, hindi po ang healthy. So anybody can answer first? Siguro yun ang muna. Then, nagbabagli. Anybody from our colleagues in the house also may pa mga questions? Yeah, uh, actually, eh, the 2016 as reflected in this line is already re the restated financial statements because uh, uh, the audited before in 2016 is uh, 63 million uh, income. So, uh, over that time, uh, Ms. Kabigti, can you confirm this po? Yeah. check na lang po. Sige, while, uh, while uh, you're yeah. explaining, well, pa-check na lang natin sa po warid. So, that's the restated figure and uh, th that was due to the recording of the uh, benefit payment of our primary care benefits, which was not available during the time that we're closing the books in CY 2017. Then, uh, as far as the rent is concerned, uh, based on my previous slide, I already stated that uh, the actual report dated as early as uh, 2016, which was uh, presented, this, we are already expecting that uh, we will be projecting a loss based on the valuation of our CY 2016 uh, valuation. So there were recommendations made by the uh, Office of the Actuary, and the uh, Manneri would later on uh, discuss it, as uh, the staff says, they recommended the following. Uh, improve 
the collection efficiency, adjust the premium contribution, rationalize the benefit payouts, as well as the proper costing of the case rates. Because proper costing of the case rates is also an audit observation of our commission on audit. So those were the four uh, major recommendations made by our actuary and uh, I think uh, SBP Neri can uh, further discuss such uh, uh, recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in relation to your question, po, um, you presented kasi kanina yung unaudited FS, right? And uh, pinakita po ninyo doon that 4 billion loss uh, for uh, the year 2017 yung na, na incurred ng uh, corporation. But you've reported that yung 4 billion uh, account is from uh, NCR lang. Ibig sabihin po ba ng total, yung pinresent nyo po as a whole, yung operasyon ng uh, PhilHealth sa sa region or sa NCR lang kayo nagkaroon ng losses? O how much is the losses all in all? Actually, pag tinignan nyo yung first slide kanina is the 8.9 billion pesos. So, from that, po, batawasan po natin ng 4.1 billion pesos na yun po yung nirecommend ng Commission on Audit. So, what now being audited as the financial statement is 4.751 billion pesos. So yun po yung nakalibro ngayon na it's now under audit of the Commission on Audit. So yun na po yung uh, adjusted financial figure of Philel for the corporation. Yun nga sir. Gusto ko lang po i-clarify. Minention nyo po kasi NCR lang nakita ang 4 billion. So yun na ba yung sa buong corporation kaya nagkaroon ng losses because of the NCR losses in operation. Can you clarify, Ma'am Ragsag? C can you, may I also just add, add to that, Mr. Chair, so that maliwanag. I think uh, what was stated was that there was a double entry in NCR. It wasn't stated that there was a loss percent in NCR. So the, the question of our chair should be answered clearly because there's a misconception that there, well, at least, yeah, it's not clear to us if that means that there was a loss. You, what you said was there was a double entry. So maybe you can answer that and explain where losses were incurred the whole time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Tama po sa sa mga Mr. Chair, tano? Because there's still a loss. Di ba kaya ito mo nating may loss pa rin? So, pwede yun. So, pwede yung paliwanan yun pag pwede yung paliwanan yun. Yes, Mr. Chair, before you answer po, ang understanding ko po sa presentation niya kanina, may pinresent siya na 8 billion, pero nag-double entry as kaya sa audit po ninyo. But still, at the end of the operation ng 2017, there's a loss of 4 billion. So, yun po yung gusto kong itanong. Na-mention po niya kanina, kanina, kanina kasi, sa NCR lang po yung losses na 4 billion. Tama po? NCR lang po yung double entry. Kaya so, yun po. So, clear po na the whole operation na po ng corporation yun. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the one you presented, it is a consolidated loss of the whole, the whole of the country, Phil Health. National. So, national. Okay. But then, the eight billion. That's still a lot. Eight billion. But then, uh, the NCR, NCR accounting made an error, uh, double entry. It's not, it's not a, a loss, but double entry, which, uh, uh, in effect, it was uh, the the loss was reduced to four billion also double entry, double entry lang uh -huh. yung uh, yung total loss for the whole country na yon consolidated consolidated income uh, loss yes, Mr. Chair, 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 paano pa yung umabot at nagkaroon kayo ng 4 billion? Bakit na liba lang? Kasi may totoo ng kapit hindi tayo, di ba? Nakukuha naman na almost 52 billion kung hindi ka paano. Bakit umabot pa rin tayo sa 4 billion na losses? Siguro, ano naman naman, ano yung number one reason kung bakit umabot kayo sa 4 billion na loss? So, pagkitingnan po natin ang ating calendar year 2017 na financial records that, that greatly contributed to 
the higher benefits compared to the income, number one is the benefit payments for senior citizens, wherein uh, we reported an expense of 21.32 billion pesos and we only uh, provided a subsidy of 13.045 billion pesos. So with that in proportion uh, amount of the senior citizen is already a contribute that will contribute already to the loss. Another one is the sponsored category, sponsored members, uh, which includes the point of care program. Uh, we, is, we receive only 3 billion pesos and have a benefit uh, expense of 12.29 billion pesos. So with that, it's already again an indication that will uh, greatly contribute to the loss. And another one is for the informal sector. Uh, we have uh, only collected 6.23 billion pesos, but we spent 22.15 billion pesos. So th those three may, those four major uh, expenditures for this category contributed a lot to the uh, loss. And likewise, we were not able to fully utilize the general appropriations act for indigent that uh, we were not able to get the trip a balance of 3.2 billion pesos so 3 billion 3.2 billion pesos it is appropriated but we were not able to collect from the dbm due to the non dealing of filial condition accounting on time so those are the contributory factors for the uh, corporate loss of around 4.75 uh, billion pesos. Yeah, Mr. Chair, um, can you actually write down the estimated amounts of each of the causes that you mentioned so that we can follow it if it roughly amounts to the 4 billion that you mentioned? Because I'd just like to point out that at least for the three basic the three main um, reasons you gave, the um, funding of the senior citizens, the sponsored programs, and the informal sector, we, we, we would have known of that. Um, we passed this law and uh, we passed the first, the, the latter two were covered by our existing PhilHealth law. So my question is, um, was there an error in uh, estimating what these expenses would be? Was there an error in uh, the actual um, count that, that you knew or in the release of those funds? Because na estimate naman po yan eh, kung ilan ng senior citizen, yung sponsored. Alam naman po natin yun. I'm, I'm assuming the sponsored are, can, can, no, actually I'm not clear who are the sponsored because I assume that the sponsored were the informal sector. Sino pa ho ba yung sponsored? And then yun lang, can we respond to that? Because how could we not anticipate that? Like, were there proper representations made to DBM and then later on to Congress to fund it? Because these are not new beneficiaries. And then I'd like to also go back because although you mentioned this earlier, you also said the recommendation of, um, was it COA? The four recommendations came from COA? That really. I'll, um, I'll uh, focus on the last two, rationalization of payouts and um, the proper costing of the payouts. Sama ba? Ra of the case basis. Okay. So on the rationalization of the payouts, does this have to do with all the, um, the, the claims, the allegations that there were a lot of payouts in the millions of pesos that are not properly documented? Is that it? Because then you have to explain it further. Uh, this is the news that went around quite a few years back, not, not recently. Is that it? Can you, can you just respond to that? And then on the proper costing of the uh, cash basis, ito ba yon? Sorry, sorry, case basis. I'm also familiar with this. Um, ito rin yung mga kaso na, di ba, papasok ka, tapos kunyari, removal of appendix. Uh, fix yan, 10 pe 10,000 pesos, whether you're a small hospital or a big hospital, right? So can you explain further so that the members and I would also understand? Because I've heard of that problem like three, four, five years ago, 
And so if it's still the reason now, then that's the question. How come we can't find an answer after three, four, or five years? Yun lang. Medyo mahaba yun. So if you could just include it in your responses. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, sa recommendations ng uh, department namin. No? So, first, yung rationalization of the benefit payouts. Uh, what we mean by that is um, kung titingnan niyo po yung burden, burden of disease ng Philippines as compared to the top 10 na binabayaran ng, Phil, ng PhilHealth, hindi po siya matching. Ibig sabihin po, uh, yung pong nakaklaim sa PhilHealth, hindi siya yung talagang nakaka-apekto sa, sa kalusugan ng mga Pilipino. So, Kaya po, kailangan po natin i-review yung um, payouts as well as yung paano natin makokontrol at ma, uh, paano ba yan, ma, malalaman na tama yung ibinabayad na mga diagnosis. So for example, um, ang pneumonia, dapat po bang ganun kataas yung bayad natin? Kaya po, naglagay po kami ng mga polisiya na, for example, uh, we will require yung mga charts that will help us uh, evaluate kung tama po yung binabayaran namin na uh, benefit payouts for this kind of diseases. So, yun po yung rationalization na ibig sabihin namin. Na, uh, isa pa po is we want to put in yung primary care benefit which will serve as the gatekeeper. Ibig sabihin po, magpupunta muna po sa primary care physician ang mga uh, pasyente bago po sila makarating sa mga hospital para po malaman kung kaya bang i-manage sa primary care setting yung kasakit nila kaysa naman makonfine kagad sila ng hindi pa, hindi naman kailangan. So, yung po yung ganong polisiya pagdating sa rationalization of benefit payouts. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, to follow up, wait, you already mentioned the key word eh yung makukonfine sila. The nature of the payout system of PhilHealth is that you will get the most benefit if you are confined. As opposed to uh, home care or ano ba tawag doon, outpatient services. So is that part of what you've asked them to rationalize? Kasama din yun? Uh, yes, ma'am. Kaya ma'am, uh, itong starting 2018, we are expanding the primary care benefit to us, to the formal sector. So that hindi na pipilita na yes, pa-confine para lang makatanggap ng libreng gamot. Tama po yun. So, I, I foresee, Mr. Chair, that the response to those questions is quite detailed. Um, is there a written report already? I'm assuming you ask them to prepare a report because iisa-isahin natin yung payouts na yun, yung, uh, di ba? So, meron na ba? Have they responded? Uh, we, maybe we can uh, provide you the, the written report na lang po as uh, requested. But that's, that's the meat of this discussion because that's the reason why. I also wanted to clarify, by the way, and I, don't, I, think, I think that this should have come from you. Is PhilHealth supposed to be income generating? No, right? So, that's the first thing you should say. When you talk about a law, you should clarify, let me explain that it is not our mandate to earn income. It is our mandate to spend the money we have wisely. Eh, but yung sinasabi yun? Siyempre, like any other person in the news report, ay, nalugi, nalugi. You should explain that. So what is your mandate? To have a zero balance? Ganun ba yun? I mean, uh, from the actuarial or the, the finance person, what is the, what is the objective? To end the year with zero, zero? Or may balance ka na 
na ano ba yung emergency fund mo? 100 million? 100,000? Para alam natin, kasi gagalit kami sa inyo na nalugi ko. Pero what if naman you made all the Filipinos healthier? Job pala namin dagdagan yung income, di ba? You're not explaining it clear, clear enough for us to understand what the real problems are. So in the back of my mind, I'm still worried that so many is lost to bogus payments. And that's also something that, well, Chair JV and I have discussed earlier. So we're not talking about those issues yet. You're not defending to us what, how you're actually pay, spending that money, if you're spending it wisely or not. But uh, yun, ans can you add that to what has to be answered? How do you want Madam to Madam Mayor, can you uh, answer the, 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 the question? Of Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I would just like to add na ang PhilHealth po talaga ay hindi dapat kumikita. But we are supposed to protect the fund at uh, dalihin yung bawat senti mo kung saan siya dapat dalihin. Yun po lang ang trabaho ng PhilHealth. And to ensure that everybody can avail of the benefits that we give, develop the right benefits na best fit our people, and make sure na siya ay dumating at umabot kung saan dapat siya dumating. Yun ang aming mandato, ma'am. So, Mr. Chair, yung 4 million na nalugi nila, pwede niyo bang i-point out yun kung saan naman napunta yun at walang napuntang, sa, hindi napunta sa, sa ospital na... na kaibigan lang pala ng management. I'm just telling you what, what the, the stories that you hear, di ba? Kung ma-outline yun, then you would be able to convince everyone that 4 billion more is what the Filipinos need to be, to be covered for their health care to be, to be, um, to be um, addressed. Or uh, the actuarial may say, or the, the independent auditor may say, well, not really because 1 billion is unaccounted for. So, what has to be answered. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much po, ma'am. Uh, again, dun sa opening statements natin, the, the charter of uh, PhilHealth is to cover everyone for uh, insurance. And again, the opening statement also of the finance officer, we do not consider the $4 billion a loss because it was given to the benefit payout, which was uh, enumerated earlier. But I hope that he can present, as you have asked, the amounts equivalent, yeah, the details on the particular membership and the amounts that were uh, given in terms of benefit payout as well as the collection that we were able to get for each particular membership. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I want to add, uh, anybody can answer. Due to the issue of fraudulent claims, this has been an issue that we have heard. And in fact, I was talking dapat ay may mag-delivery, kinagawa si Saya. Tapos kanina po, isa pang dito, na ay bawal at isip po, kung-isip po, kunting ubo, ang claim ay may mga ito. Kasi kung tayo po yun, against 2,000 or 4,000 lamang, di ba ba? Tapos yung iba po, tulad ng, ano may mga nagagalas na claim, active that in writings, UTI, at iba pa. What has to be done to to itong yung meron sa ito. Kung sakali man po ito, ano po yung ginawa niyo yung mga safeguards para kasi po, ano ito, kung baka kawawa naman yung dapat papuntahan na ito itong nangangailangan. Tapos, due to the corporate claims, we are losing money, nangangang pa yung pera. Di ba? Di ba? Nakakalungkot kasi parang po siya pa rin ito. Baka po, sa tingin ko, yung NHC and the contractor, may collusion. Tapos, ito pa rin ito, meron din ito. Baka yung hospital, doktor, So, ano po ang ginagawa ng yung ahinsa para matigilan itong hemorrhage ito na pagluloko, this is fraud, na dapat matuputo yung poor billion yan doon po sa ibang mga ilangin, eh, napupunta sa panluloko. Ano po ang ginagawa nyo? Okay, thank you very much po, Mr. Ch uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, I would just like to say na ang board kasama ng management have been uh, instituting reforms like ngayon, dati hindi kami humihingi ng uh, charts or proof na siya ay may pneumonia. Ngayon, humihingi na po kami ulit ng uh, supporting documents to tell us na totoo ang pneumonia yan. Kasi uh, we have to strengthen our monitoring as well as yung investigation. Kasi hindi naman po natin pwedeng sabihin na fraudulent yung mga claims. But we have to have proof. Unfair naman po sa ating mga partners na hospital and doctors kung bigla na lang nating sasabihin yun. So we have Sino po ang gumagawa? Sino po ang gumagawa? Medical, um, audit, tama ba? Sino po ang 
Mga doktor po. Meron na. Uh, review. Uh, yes po. Sir. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Siguro, since we're talking about fraudulent claims, may data mo ba kayo kung magkano itong fraudulent claims? Thank you very much po. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I respond? And ang um, susunod na question, may nakasuha na po ba kayo at may na-convict na ba tayo na nag-claim, ah, uh, nagkaroon uh, ng fraudulent claims? Okay, gaya na sinabi ko po kanina, Ma'am Senator, uh, hindi po natin pwedeng sabihin na fraudulent. Kailangan po siyang investigahan. Although there are alleged fraudulent claims, we have to investigate and make sure that we are, you know, really looking at a fraudulent claim. Again, meron kaming <coughs> HIDAC or Health Insurance Data Analytic Committee that analyzes all these uh, reports that we are receiving all over the country. I have I think she is with us. No? We have our uh, chief information officer who would uh, expound on the HIDAC report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ma'am Ma Aragona, right? Uh, before you re respond po on that, uh, for better appreciation lang po of the body, can you please explain how our claims is being processed So, paano nyo po, paano yung proseso po ng claims? Para ma-appreciate po namin, kailan nyo pinagdududahan na ang isang facility or isang doctor ay allegedly ay nag-engage uh, ng fraudulent acts. So, for appreciation of the body lang, if anyone can answer, how, how does it being process? Madam Chair, um, Yes. Uh, a claim is provided or submitted by the healthcare uh, um, facility, uh, one, either through a manual uh, submission or through an electronic submission right now. So a submission, that will have to go through an adjudication being done by our uh, uh, benefits administration section people. Adjudication would include checking of all the details, not only of the medical detail, but uh, I mean, the information, particularly of the hospital and of the uh, um, personal information of the member. Then after the adjudication, if everything else is, is, uh, uh, is okay, then it will, be, it will pass through our medical review. The medical review now, um, composed of the doctors, would do the medical audit, the medical evaluation, the ICD-10, the RVS coding, the checking of all, including the uh, accreditation of those people. If it's a good claim, then it will have to go through our uh, payment approval. However, if all pass through those two and there is a uh, document, for example, that needs to be a uh, uh, from the provider, then the particular claim will have to be returned to the hospital for compliance. If we found out that this particular claim is, uh, for example, not compensable, or for example, is uh, for denial because of reasons um, as identified, for the member is not uh, qualified or is not eligible, the case is not compensable, hospital is not accredited, then it will have to be denied by the uh, by the office. For the, after the payment approval, then it will have to go to check and uh, uh, proceed to payment. Now, for those claims which will be returned to the hospital, they are given 60 days again to refile the claim, uh, submitting the required documents. However, if, we, if it's a denied claim, then the hospital has a, uh, an avenue to file for a motion for reconsideration. And then again, if it's still denied, then we, they can go to an appeal. Uh, and that appeal will have to be uh, processed by our protested appeals in the central office. So, um, paano po ninyo na-determine yung... Uh, part of the fraudulent acts, sabi nyo, upcasing no? yes. in pneumonia. So, ang basis natin, di ba, you have the CPGs or the ICD-10. And the charts. Ma and the charts. Yes, so, Chair. can you give us one example na na-encounter ninyo na masasabi nyo na nag-upcase? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, for example, uh, in, in evaluating the yeah, uh, in evaluating the chart or the submitted documents, for example, for a pneumonia, but clinical uh, um, presentation or the signs and symptoms does not fit the pneumonia as is, then it will be uh, subjected for, an, uh, for uh, investigation, validation, uh, because 
part of our policy, for example, in pneumonia is we only allow payment for pneumonia with moderate type or severe type. For pneumonia, uh, which is in mild uh, uh, condition, uh, medical uh, protocol would say it is actually part of the outpatient. So, dun pala po makikita natin kung nagkiklaim, as per presentation, it's not consistent with the moderate or severe type, then makikita natin either the hospital allegedly would be upcasing or up-encoding the uh, said claim for us to pay for them. So, hindi muna po yun natin nababayadan. Prior years, hindi tayo nagre-require ng documentary requirements, but right now, we are already uh, uh, requiring the complete clinical chart. Uh, including the laboratories and diagnostics because we have seen also not only pneumonia but as, you, as the uh, a good chair uh, of the Senate said, even gastroenteritis for the past years, UTI has been increasing, even sepsis. So for those four, we are now requiring all those documents for us to do our monitoring. And then if, uh, if for example, ma'am, it's a quality issue, then uh, um, that will be uh, acted upon through our either accreditation or quality assurance. And if really it's a fraudulent claim, then it will, will be now forwarded to our finding for any legal action. Dr. Ish, most of the cases kasi, before you found out na, find out na, Merong fraudulent acts. Nabayadan nyo na in most cases. Yes, eh. So, ang, ang question doon talaga, kasi currently post-audit ang meron kayo, tinanggal yes. ninyo yung pre-review pre uh, ng uh, uh, cases. no yes. So, that will prevent talaga yes. yung uh, makapagbayad kayo on those cases. Uh, in 2009, you set up this... Uh, you hired a uh, legal and paramedical staff. You created that uh, program on Operation okay. Lighthouse. Yes. Uh, is it currently on operation ba? Kasi this is an anti-fraud uh, division, I think. So currently ba existing yan or existing. nawala yan? Baka it might be a reason then kaya... Uh, nangyayari po yung mga unnecessary claims natin. Yes, Madam Chairman. Um, the Open White House was actually uh, instituted because of the uh, issues on the cataract before. Uh, for the pneumonia and the other um, identified diseases, yes, under the case rate, the pre-medical pre uh, review was uh, removed because it was a post-audit as part of the payment mechanism. However, as we see and evaluate, we actually brought back the prepayment medical review, particularly in, those, in these four identified cases. Um, so lahat po yung mga yun ngayon, babayagan, are actually undergoing the prepayment medical review as part of our um, instituted reform to make sure that we monitor before, before we pay. And gaya po nung nabanggit kanina, because of the HEDAC, which is now continuously monitoring all this, all the uh, uh, cases coming into our uh, uh, dashboard, uh, we can see now the patterns. So if we, there's a need again to institute other reforms, then we will do so. Po. For the Oakland Lighthouse, Madam Chair, may we ask the legal department. So before we are in the Oakland Lighthouse, sino ba magano? Dr. Dennis? Oh. Mr. Chair, you amount na po magkano yung fraudulent claim? Ah. Ilan na yun ang fraudulent claim? Sino pa rin? Ingenier Aragona, sino ba mag-present? Yes, uh, our chief uh, information. information officer, uh, Ms. Jovita Aragon. Sure. But before that, no, 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 quickly lang, um, the fraudulent claim said the bill. Kaya sa akin yung pending case sa, sa legal department of field health. Ilan po yung disposal rate? Siguro kung anybody from the legal can answer. May nasuspect pa pa na penalize, nag-hospital, doktor, uh, regarding permanent claims. Siguro yung number niya para na may idea tayo. Sige, tayo niyo yung kailangan niyo. Yes. Good afternoon. Ang um, for the past year from 2015 up to 2017, we have actually uh, input uh, in 215 cases penalties against uh, both hospitals and doctors for different body performances uh, on the field of loss. So that is the latest. So were they at any penalty? Were they just fine? Were they suspended? Any uh, penalty? Meron po yung fine, but meron din po yung both suspension and fine. Kila ka po yung accreditation? Meron ba ganun? Yung accreditation po, pag yung suspension po, is the whole time of that accreditation is parang napanggalan po kasi hindi mo po sila mga kapag-renew na 
accreditation. Mr. Chair, in relation to that, uh, do you have a data? Meron na po ba kayong terminate ng accreditation because of the case filed? Mr. Chair, so can I please answer? Uh, other than being the OIC, I'm also a board member. So I remember discussing about that. Uh, that is in consideration for hospitals or uh, healthcare facilities in places where there are no other facility who can take care of our members. So that's Kasi magsasara sila, no? wala nang magsiservice. Yes. So pag wala nang ibang health facilities, fine na lang. Ganun ba? Ah, yun yung discussion. That was the discussion in the board. Yes, sir, Dr. Menes, uh, would you, you would, would want to uh, say something? Sasagutin ko lang po kasi sinasabi ni hearing, ni investigation. Malimit po ang nangyayari ngayon, at saka mayroong kaso na suspected po. Pag-renew po ng hospital at ng doktor, hindi na nalang nire-renew kagad. So, no hearing po ang nangyayari because till help is the prosecutor, the judge, the one who receives the MR, and finally the Supreme Court is the board of the peer help. So, kanya nga po kanya ang hospital at doktor. Dataanan po nila yung lahat. Wala na pong ano, misan, nandito po sa akin, dal dala ko po dito, from Mindanao, Cebu, Luzon, Quezon, wala po silang ginawang hearing. Immediately after one or two days or after week, meron lang suspension. During the time po, President uh, Banson, nakiusap kami na huwag na mag, ano, suspension pa na lang. Kasi po, maraming hospital na maliliit po doon sa maliliit na areas natin sa Pilipinas. Majority po doon, mga private hospitals na po ang present. So, hindi po sila mapagsisilbihan kung wala pong hospital na private. Hindi naman po sa pinagmamalaki natin, marami po ang private na mas maganda kaysa sa government. So, pupunta po sila sa private kahit na sila maggastos. So, kailangan po dito protection na natin yung private kasi kaya nga po almost everyday narinig po ako kasi sa 55 hospitals pa lang po na nagre-report sa akin after na distribute ni I, uh, again, I will uh, ano, President OIC de la Sena for transferring the uh, vice presidents. Hindi na po sila natakot na mag-produce ng data na ito yung utang ng peer health in those areas. Harus everyday po binibigay ko kay Dr. Pardas yung report na ito po yung hospital na nagbigay. Halos everyday po may nagre-report sa akin. Sa, may ito na hospital, for example, five days, may utang po ang peer health ng 3 million. How can you survive? Ten days, yung po mismo yung hospital ni Congressman Apop sa Antipolo, 19 beds lang po yun. Ang utang ng peer health is 4 million. So how can you expect the private hospitals to survive? You have to pay the medicines in 30 days. 
We have to pay security guard. We have to pay salaries of the nurses. Meron na po tayong kulang ng nurses. Ngayon, hikwitan po kami ng DOH. Sasabihin sa amin, in 10 beds, dapat 10 nurses kayo. Pero ano, ship, meron kayong metrics na 10. So, how can we survive? Kaya po sinasabi ko po ito para matulungan natin yung small patients na pupunta sa private. So, hopefully, makagawa po tayo ng batas na puproteksyon na naman po yung mga hospital at uh, doktor. Kasi po, ang nangyayari dito lahat, may kasalanan lahat ng hospital at doktor. Hindi na po nabigyan kami ng batas na maganda para sa hospital at doktor. Uh, doktor uh, Buhir, a lawyer and a doctor, can enumerate all the laws against the doctors in the hospital. Wala po kami batas pa na, na nakukuha sa Senado o sa Kongreso na maganda po sa hospital, especially the private. So yun po lang ang pakiusap ko kung uh, meron mga utang na malalaki, ipatikot, bayagan na po ngayon immediately because ang tingin ko po in another two or three months, magsasana po yung maliliit na hospital if the, this will continue. Tsaka itatang ko po another thing is, nakarating ko sa akin na meron po 14 month at 15 month at 16, 16th month bonus ang PhilHealth. Meron po po educational bonus. So you have to answer that. Because you have to answer that. Please order that. Please order that. Uh, please order that. Please pass me to Papa De Bravo, please if you are hearing. Tsaka yung sinasabi ko sa case rate, tumawag po kami doon, di ba sabi nila, wala na pong investigahan. Bibigay lang yung diagnosis, babayag mo nila, tutubo kami sa iba, malulubi kami sa ibang case. Pero ngayon po ang nangyayari, iba pa yung natin ng claim, more than 120 days na, hindi po binabayagan. Nung sabi nila, he claims, in place ng bumibis po, na akong bumagal. So, ang bayag. So, yun po ang sinasabi namin sa kanila. Ngayon, nire-require kami, dadalhin namin yung records na ganyang kakaupat. And that is also a case na national privacy law. That's why po kinuantra namin. Sir, uh, the time is, pati ano na lang yung nationalist tayo, we are put in the federal claims. Yun, kasama po kasi yun. Kaya po sinabi kasi. Kaya po ano natin, nationalist tayo. Kaya po, kaya po, kaya po, kaya po yun ang sinasabi nila. May claims na po. Kaya po, kaya po, kaya po, po. Salamat po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, following that line from Dr. Jimenez, may we know from the uh, health how do you go through the administrative uh, cases? How do you go through the administrative cases? from filing of cases? Ito ba may immediate suspension? Meron ba tayong uh, preliminary investigation conducted? Do we have a theory, actual theory, not only paper theory? Uh, may we know from uh, PhilHealth? Please answer po ano po ang inyong ginagawa ng mga puro sa mga pangyayos. Just a minute please. Just to give you an overview ng digital process. We undergo three stages. First is the fact of the investigation. Second stage is we work for the preliminary investigation. And finally, the case are filed with the arbitration of which for hearing. So that is a couple of certain of the due process in all cases. And finally, if the arbitration office can come to a decision, this is appealable to the board. And if the respondent is satisfied by the decision of the board, the decision of the board is further appealable to the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court. The question, Mr. Chair, is that do we conduct actual hearings? Like, we, the complainants and the respondents come to your office and the legal office to present their case and be heard? As a general rule, Your Honor, just like in other administrative cases, we do not conduct hearings. But in the case of the whether case already reaches the arbitration office, it is on the discretion of the arbiter to call a hearing upon the request of either parties. Mr. Chair, in relation to that question, may I clarify if the regional offices has legal service as prosecutorial power? Did I have that power? I know you have the only have the finding functions. They refer cases to the central office for preliminary investigation and hearing proper. The reason why I ask this question, because I share the sentiment, some of the sentiments of Dr. Jimenez on your procedure, because I. 
parang nakikita ko din, may abuse of the, your quasi-judicial quasi power. Uh, you have to consider that it's a hospital, no? Providing health service services to the people. So, yung senior niya kanina, uh, actually my office has been receiving a lot of letters from those facilities that uh, I think hasn't given the, the accreditation right now. So, same ang sinasabi nila, uh, binigyan niyo po na assessment, ito ang violations niya. Sumagot siya sa inyo, pinadala niya, ang kasunod niyang natanggap that your accreditation has been denied. So, ang, ang gusto lang siguro ng uh, Philippine Hospital Association, both from private and government, is that a venue where you can stop and uh, I think defend themselves. Kasi if you have a strong case naman, okay naman, diba? Then, uh, kasuhan po natin. But, Yung epekto po siguro sa kanila, no, as, uh, well, in the private, kasi in the business uh, entity sila, kung makikita nyo po yung epekto, uh, talaga naman po uh, halos babaksak na at magsasarado na talaga sila. No? So, kailangan din nating intindihin yung punto na yun. Kaya nga ang question ko kanina, bakit ba kasi kailangan nadaya na kayo bago nyo pa malaman? Hindi ba pwedeng ma-prevent natin talaga na nag-engage ang professional o ang facilities doon sa paggawa ng mga allegedly mga ganong bagay? So, I think... Uh, Yung sistema in place, no? yung process, mechanisms, and strategies within the field health, I think, kailangang uh, strengthen po talaga ninyo na hindi po dapat talaga kayo na dadaya anyone, any individual, or any uh, facilities kasi uh, ito ay ang apektado po kasi yung pasyente. So, totoo po yun. Sa, sa district naman na been receiving a lot of text that um, hindi daw po accredited yung hospital. Ang paliwanag po ng hospital, hindi ninyo pinabayanan. So, merong miscommunication doon. No? So, hindi alam ng pasyente, kaya hindi accredited. Merong uh, violations. So, ang, ang nangyari po, ang pasyente, ito ang accessible na hospital sa kanya, has to go to Lucena, which is 3, 3 to 4 hours from the public barangay or will take a day before makarating. So, ang nasaan po ang epekto talaga? Di ba ang nasasuffer are the patients? So, I think, y y yung question kasi, yung, yung uh, the way you assess and you exercise your uh, quasi-judicial power po. I, I think it's a big factor, sir. Sir John. Madam Chair, just to um, put some points as said, um, raised by um, Dr. Jimenez, of course, one, um, our partners in in the her in the delivery of services. But just to correct um, at the outset, um, Your Honours, as mentioned by our Chief Finance Officer, as regards compensation of health employees, we are currently following to the letter the salary standardization law of field health, including um, salaries and uh, bonuses. So there are no more other bonuses that we are receiving beyond the SSL. As regards the issue on um, um, delays in premium payments, you're correct, Madam. We have to include um, controls in our benefit payments. That's why it also contributed probably to the perception of delay. Um, before, we used to uh, pay our, benef our providers um, within 30 days, but due to the controls and the volume of claims that we are receiving right now, admittedly, there are some regions um, which have exceeded the 60 days but majority of our regions 11 of at least of our regions there are one there is some regions are paying within 30 days but just to say we have also um, um, instructed our people to do a reconciliation we would be emailing all the status of received claims um, from 2014 to 2018 to each and every provider of field health so that we would be doing uh, we would be able to do a reconciliation we would like to believe that many of the claims um, this is a reconciliation issue but there are also delays and we have also instituted measures within field health to ensure that the claims will be paid within 30 days your honors we would be able to address um, these concerns um, hopefully within the next couple of months uh, yung question ko po on the quasi-judicial power uh, 
sa legal service po. The way you uh, assess and uh, come up with a decision on suspension, uh, pwede po bang i-improve natin yon? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, we are always trying to review yung current processes namin, including the implementing rules and regulations of uh, field law to see if what they are, uh, can still be improved. Uh, for example, in how we can fast track the disposition of cases uh, and so forth, your honors. But let's assume that we always support to protect to the respondents. Do you think, sir, uh, kasi we're crafting the UHC bill, no? Which will repeal the existing field health uh, law. Uh, Na-mention ko po kanina, walang prosecutorial power ang regional offices. So, anong nangyayari sa kanila? So, nagde-decide na sila, okay, cancel ka. So, walang venue to, uh, for a hearing. Do you, do you, kayo po na nasa field health, do you suggest na kailangan at the level of the regional offices, magkaroon sila ng uh, ganong uh, power? Ako naman, we are going to explore kung if we can centralize even the prosecutorial uh, authority to the regions. Right now, uh, our regulatory uh, factor is still with the, the GCG for review and for negotiation. But one of the talking points there is in our mind, even to decentralize even the prosecutorial power in the central office to the region level. So that is still under study here, ma'am. Going back, let's go sub Uh, private hospital, si Dr. Jimenez or Dr. Dim, tinutukol po sa... Sige pa. Uh, group up here, ang mga members of the Oversight Committee. Uh, first of all, I think it is unfair to uh, attribute the losses of field health to fraudulent acts of healthcare providers like hospital and doctors. We have to make sure that we have validated evidence that three hospitals and doctors are committing fraudulent acts as a general practice. Because, you know, uh, we will tell all our hospitals and all our doctors that, you know, we are being accused of fraud, fraud, fraud because and that is attributed to the nurses that we love, and I think that is unfair. The second issue is whether or not the trend, like the example, when many acute doctors, writers, etc., which will account for most of the claims of the health, are most of them to let alone? Maybe not, because if we will not be, most of these diseases like pneumonia, acute gastroenteritis, and other are diseases of the poor. So in other words, if you deny these diseases of the poor, like for example, acute pneumonia, acute gastroenteritis, it is tantamount to saying that we actually are not saving our mandate. And that is basically the purpose of the health, to save our mandate. Why do we need to say, say, G package as a more, time, more important case rate rather than the more important which is actually our mandate to set the pool. Now, the third issue is regarding fraudulent like the way how we are handled status. First and foremost is, we have to always uh, cite the provision of the law, and that is, a patient to feel like is a privilege. So in other words, the government, for example, we have to always take to see a red flag among what practices work well without undergoing, let's say, proper investigation and due process, we need everybody to have a day in court. Immediately, hospitals are denied the accreditation. So what will be the result of that? The result will be people in the periphery, like we suffer with small hospitals, which are actually serving the poor people, are actually closing because, you know, they are the accreditation, so they terminate it. So by just mere red flag. And that is nothing that is unfair. So uh, I think that at the end of the accreditation of the field, I mean, that we always think that, you know, all hospitals, all doctors should have a day in court. That meaning, before we will terminate an accreditation, then there should be help, there should be an investigation. But what usually happens is, you will already see a decision, and then the hospital will just, okay, I am losing my accreditation because of just new right. These are new allegations. And allegations will not, it should not, uh, it should not deprive the hospital as a court 